So here we are reviewing absolute value expressions. Now recall that the absolute value of a real number x denoted by x in between two straight bars is the distance between x and zero on the number line. So let's consider an example to help us better understand this concept. So here we're thinking about the absolute value of negative three and the absolute value of positive three. So starting with the absolute value of negative three and looking over at our number line, we want to ask ourselves how many units away from zero is the digit negative three? And we can literally count the, count the units. One, two, three. So we can see that even though we're thinking about x is equal to negative value, it's still a total of three units away from zero on the number line. So we can say that the absolute value of negative three is equal to positive three. And very similarly, if we're thinking about the absolute value of positive three and jumping over to our number line, we can say how many units away from zero is three on the number line? And again, counting the length, we can see that this is exactly three units away from zero on the number line, making the absolute value of positive three also equal to three. So now that we have established some intuition for evaluating absolute value expressions, let's consider the formal definition. So for this definition, we want to begin by letting x be any real number our little hearts desire. Then we have the following. So formally, we define the absolute value as the absolute value of x being equal to what we call a piecewise function. So we have two different cases or two different equations for different parts of the domain. We say that the absolute value of x is equal to positive x if x is greater than or equal to zero, whereas the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if we're considering values of x that are less than zero. So let's pause for a cause here and think about which, what each equation is telling us. So equation one of the absolute value definition is telling us that if x is non-negative, so in other words, if x is positive or if x is equal to zero, then the absolute value of x is just x itself. Versus in equation two, so equation two of the absolute value definition is telling us that when x is negative, so when it's less than zero, the absolute value of x is going to be the opposite value of x. So to help us better understand, let's think about examples of each case. So for case number one, when x is non-negative, so positive or zero, if we have the absolute value of say the number seven, seven is positive, it's greater than zero, so this is simply equal to seven. And very similarly, if we were taking the absolute value of zero, this falls into our first category and is simply zero. Now, case two is the more exciting case. Suppose here we're asked to evaluate the absolute value of negative seven. Now, from the definition, we know that the absolute value of a negative number is going to be the opposite of that value. So our number here is negative seven. So the opposite of negative seven shows us that we have a negative multiplied by a negative, which we of course know produces a positive value. 